Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my personal self-care regime. It's a video that's been requested by one of my wonderful subscribers, Kelly. And Kelly is always incredibly kind and very generous with her comments, with her compliments. And when she asked specifically, I would love to see more videos on your personal self-care regime, I thought, I'll schedule it a bit later in the year, but why not do it now? I'm actually taking care of myself. This is all part of my personal self-care regime. I am thousands of miles away from my usual location where I record the majority of my videos. And I'm in a place called The Hyde. The Hyde is a safari camp and it's located in Wange National Park, which is in Zimbabwe. And I'm here very much as part of my personal self-care regime. To me, personal self-care is split into two very distinct categories, the mental side of things and then the physical side of things, physical being what you eat and exercise. But for you to be able to do the, the, the eating part, the physical side productively, the mental side needs to be in a good place. And when I say a good place, for me specifically, it means I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm productive, I'm, I'm happy, I'm in a good space mentally. And then that feeds on to absolutely every other aspect of my life. And part of my mental self-care is just withdrawing from the world and just resting and then recharging and coming back energized and literally firing on all cylinders. The hide is incredibly hot and humid, as you can see from the way I'm dressed. And it's a safari camp that's in an incredibly remote area. There's no access, there are no telephone masts around here, so you cannot make or receive calls. And there's a small seating space where you have access to Wi-Fi. Otherwise, the rest of the camp, you do not have access to the outside world. You are here purely for the game and um, just being away from the world, being able to recharge and just enjoy nature. And I've done a lot of that and thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just given me time to rest, recharge and reconnect with nature and just rethink a number of things. And I'm, I'm feeling absolutely fantastic. So I'll just talk in this video about both my mental and also my physical self-care regimes. I'm Anesu Sagond and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're into luxury but wanting to focus on quality under the radar brands, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, then my content is geared towards you. There are 10 tents at the Hyde and guests are able to do f up to four activities a day. The first activity is a massive game drive from six until 10 and uh, six until 11 in the morning. When we come back from that, lunch is served until 12.30 and then from 12.30 till four, we get a break. And then from four till 4.30, tea is served. And then 4.30 until about 6.37, there is a guided uh, walking safari. So I'm trying to record this video between tea time, between lunchtime and tea time. So I have about two to three hours to turn this video around. There's a generator going on in the background. There's bird song in front of me. And there are a couple of people replenishing drinks, setting tables for tea. So please bear with me. The noise is minimal but it is going to be there in the background. But coming back to the subject matter of the video, the mental side of things I addressed, uh, as well as the physical, when I first started my channel, um, I have, or oh, I started a number of different series. One of them was Conversations Over 40. And in there, I talked in a lot of detail about preparing for my 40s, from my early, mid 30s, addressing things that I liked, I didn't like about myself, and I wanted to improve before I got to 40. I wanted to show up strongly in my 40s. I'm now well into my 40s, 45, and I'm in what I feel is a really good place mentally, physically and mentally. 
And um, I've changed gears from my 30s and my early, early mid 30s, what I was doing. And now it's very much about uh, maintaining who I am and uh, what I need to do, go, what I need to do going forward. And one thing I do quite well is I have a lot of friends who are considerably older than me. I was raised by my grandparents. So I like older company. So it's always touching base and getting golden nuggets of advice from people who've um, already gone trodden the path I'm on, um, letting me know what they would do differently without changing my life too much and living my life according to someone else, but just getting nuggets here and there to make a difference. But I have about, I would say four or five guiding principles now in my 40s that I'm going to use going forward. The first is no negativity. No negativity in terms of my own personal thoughts, my words, being very careful of what I say, how I say it and what I'm doing. Just absolutely no negativity and also taking in no negativity from external sources. So I'm incredibly mindful about what I read, what I watch, um, who I talk to, uh, who I hang out with for use of a better word. And if someone or something is not working, being able to gracefully withdraw myself and it's not about being rude or nasty but just saying this doesn't work for me and it might not be just the other person doesn't work for me I might not also be someone else's cup of tea but being mindful it's not always uh, about the other person it, it is also about you too and the impact you have on someone the other is no stress um Whatever you do in life, whether you have a good life, a bad life, you're wealthy, you're poor, you're always going to be um, faced with stress from different angles, from different people, different situations. And it's how you deal with it. And for me, the biggest has been communication. So many times things have been misinterpreted, misunderstood because there's been no communication. People are stressed. People are anxious. And for me, I feel at my age I have a duty of care to myself and to those nearest and dearest to me to address things as they happen and to have the difficult, awkward conversations without being phased. I think that's what comes with age, with responsibility, with experience. And once you have conversations, you will have stress, but you're dealing with it. But what I also found in my 30s is that where I was stressed or I was anxious or nervous about something and the potential outcome, especially if I wasn't uh, sure how it would turn out, is I would procrastinate and I would procrastinate badly. I'd always be putting things off that I was really nervous or anxious about. But now it's something that I do very, very little. It's more because I just have so many things I'm juggling. But this whole procrastinating, someone tells me something, they need something. And I find those who are closest to me are not procrastinators. So that really has made a difference because they inspire me. The minute we talk about something, they are doing it within minutes of us having finished the conversation. So that procrastination is slowly becoming a distant memory for me. And as I said, it's not something I do a lot of, but it's something I totally want to eliminate. Something comes up, good or bad, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, just do it, deal with it and go on. The other is big tasks and more so when I think, for example, when I started my channel, um, I was incredibly overwhelmed by the amount of research I had to do for the type of videos I wanted to put together, talking to brands and then putting it together and presenting it. And I used to be so overwhelmed and exhausted by the end of um, the whole video. But I learned to break things down into bite-sized chunks, do something, do it well, move it on to the next and move on to the next. And before you know it, you finish the task and you've done a better job than if you try to just take a wild stab at everything in one go. So that's something I've learned. But I've also realized as I've been getting older, and it would be great to hear from other people, particularly in my 40s, getting brain fog, forgetting things that I ordinarily would have been able to remember quite easily. And what I did, as soon as I realized, oh, I'm starting to forget things that I wasn't forgetting before, diarizing everything. The minute someone says something to me, I make a note in my diary, set a reminder so I don't forget. I'm able to do something, do it properly, do it on time. And it's something that I've just learned. Um, I think as I get older, sorry, there was a lizard down there and I didn't want to scream. But as I've been getting older, that my memory might not be so great, but I'm of the opinion you exercise your body, the muscle grows, you exercise your brain and therefore your brain improves. I don't know, I'm hoping, but I noticed, but I know for a fact when I sleep well, and here at the height, I'm sleeping very well. It's long days, early starts, the fresh air away from 
the hustle and bustle of normal life. I'm sleeping very well. And I notice my mind, my memory is a lot better. And the, the brain fog I sometimes struggle with in London when I'm overwhelmed with a lot of things going on and maybe not sleeping as well is something that's um, slowly drifting off for the time being. And I hope I can maintain when I get back to London. And then the final is fear of the unknown. I used to be so worried about how things used to are going to turn out, what people thought about me, what people said, just letting go. And as I said uh, in Conversations Over 40, accepting who you are, the good and the bad, and just living the, your best life, living as productively, as positively as possible, and not worrying about if this happens, what am I going to do, or if that happens, but just live. Things always have a way of turning out I found out and then moving on to the physical side physical to me is very much what you eat and also the physical component your exercise what you're doing those two work it's a triangle together with uh, the mental personal self-care you need those three things to work in tandem together uh, looking at what I eat as I've mentioned before I'm very much into the quality of my food, um, the quality of what I'm e of what I'm eating, organic if I can afford it, going for local seasonal food, and having three square meals a day, uh, and not snacking in between, and freshly prepared meals. I'm someone who works from home, so I have no excuse whatsoever. I prepare my meals, and it makes such a difference that I notice I've noticed I'm able to maintain my weight. Uh, things like bloating are very much a distant memory. Age has also meant sugar has been cut out. Uh, eating sugar just didn't work with me. Uh, dairy as well didn't work so it's non-dairy as well and no snacks in between has also made um, a very big difference for me. In terms of the exercise one thing I found is particularly in my 40s it took me a couple of years to figure this out but I was sleeping for about five hours I'd be up for an hour possibly two hours and then sleep for another two three hours I need to physically exhaust myself so I need to either exercise first thing in the morning or go for a long walk Sometimes it's not possible. I have a lot going on and I can't take out an hour, for example, to go for a walk. What I do is walk to or from meetings, for example. And I typically uh, do a 30 minute exercise uh, class using weights um, online, do it at home. And I use, um, I, I tend to watch a lot of classes uh, by a lady called uh, Caroline Gervan. Absolutely fantastic. I enjoy them. And it means by the end of the day, getting to bedtime, I'm tired and I'm able to sleep through the night. It's made such a big difference for me. But it's important as you get older to not only be physically active, for example, walking, cycling, running, but you also need to do weight bearing exercises. They make such a big difference because they help um, with stronger bones and to maintain stronger bones. And they also have a knock on impact um, with your joints in terms of being a lot more coordinated, flexible, and also helping with your balance. You need to throw in the weight bearing and it's not massive weights. You can just use uh, bags of sugar or a bottle of water, but just some sort of weight bearing exercise together with some sort of um, cardio has made a huge difference. But for me, being active, um, at least at the end of the day, I'm tired, but I love walking. It keeps your weight down good for your body and you're out and about enjoying the fresh air but it depends entirely on where you are but a very short rundown of my personal self-care the mental side of things the physical side of things what I eat the exercise um, and just bringing those three together anything else in more detail do let me know in the comments Kelly and anybody else who wants to uh, talk about personal self-care share ideas especially in our 40s going into 50s I'm always open for such conversations as always thank you for watching and do subscribe so you don't miss out on my upcoming uh, luxury travel uh, travel series showcasing some of the best resorts in Africa